everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the observing tray. Sometimes it's called a nature tray. And this is kind of in conjunction with the last video about doing a walk and being observant. For the young child, it is incredibly important that when they walk, they interact with the world around them. And by creating a nature tray, you help one, contain what comes into the house, and two, allow the child to repeatedly interact with these things and to find what they hadn't noticed in that first initial look. There are several things to consider. Um, one is the delicacy of what you're allowing the child to look at. This is perfectly acceptable to the elementary child. It contains their objects to six at any given time and it keeps the scale of the object down. It also provides a space that we'll look at in a moment to record their observations once they use a magnifying glass to look at it. So let's look at a couple of other possibles for you. Here is an observation tray for a slightly younger child. This would come out. This would slide in like this and a younger child has something to observe very carefully with the magnifying glass. You don't have to be completely stuck with just nature. Here are two metal observable objects. We have someone's driver's license from 1950 with letters and engraving on it and they will be fascinated trying to figure out what is on there. And then keys. I cannot explain it, but staring at keys through a hand lens is incredibly interesting. We can also look at other nature items and even things that we have created. Uh, these are crystals that were grown on, um, it's like a piece of fulgurite from the beach the other day. So that is the possibilities. Let's go back to our original setup with the elementary child. And here's what we have. So for the younger child, half the time, the interest is actually in unzipping and pulling this out and putting it back in. They may do this motion multiple times as a three to six year old until they are fulfilled with that. And then we begin to realize how optics work and how the distance changes the size of what we are looking at. We can turn this over. This refracts the light in different ways when I move my magnifying glass around. And for a moment, let's talk magnifying glasses. This is a serious magnifying glass. This one has a real glass lens because that was important to me. Uh, the distortion level and the quality of what the child can see in a plastic lens bothered me and bothered the children that I was working with. Um, the other thing to be conscious about is if you have a child who would do better with a plastic lens to begin with, start with, but don't go with the really cheap little plastic handheld magnifying glasses. This is a real work. This is something that is fascinating for the child, shows them the world in high detail, and clarity and beauty is really important. Now, for the older child, you can do a number of different extension pieces for the observation. For example, I might find that I am really fascinated by the way the shell has little wavy lines. And I might realize that some of them are a little further apart and they seem to come in series. And some of them seem to have some rays that come off of them. And so I can fill this quadrant that I just assigned with those. I might find that 
I'm very interested that there are five little dots right in the middle of that sea biscuit. And I might decide that I want to make five little dots all over this and work that out. And I can go through and I can come back and I can add to this. My work is not complete though until I keep going through and I create an entire circular piece. Now the reason that it's circular and defined that way is because what shape was our hand lens? Our hand lens is circular and the child's mind is thinking about the circular nature of the hand lens. So as you work through finding things and wanting to collect, there are great ways to limit what can come in the house, allowing the child to move through items and rotate in and out. Um, we have a keepsake box that our children would choose things that were incredibly precious, but there's only a certain amount of space in there. And so it has to be curated and allowing the child who's trying to organize their world to have the space to curate and organize a collection of things that represent their world is incredibly important, especially to the elementary age child. It is also incredibly important to let them know that this is the boundary and that sometimes we can't keep everything we would like to keep. And therefore we have to choose what we might pass on to a friend or give to our grandparent as a gift, but we can't keep all things all the time. We do have a couple of rather fragile things that were found and I have no idea where this box came from, but we store a lot of fragile things that we want to observe in this box or things that might blow away if someone walked by very quickly. Um, another thought is little Petri dishes. They are really good for holding smaller insects, more fragile insects that you might want to keep. Um, and the child can then curate through that process as well because these will disintegrate over time. So today we've looked at and discussed having an observation tray and having a way to record creatively the things that we are looking at and that we are observing in our world. And an observation tray is suitable for toddlers with sticks and larger rocks and things that they discover and want to haul around. And it has to fit on the tray. So those giant 10 foot long sticks that they will come dragging out of the woods are not gonna work on our observation tray. Could you find a smaller one that will? One of the things to note is that I have limited the size of the observation tray by using these egg cups. This is as big as we're gonna go right now. In the case of this one, I have limited to the size of this. If I were working with a toddler, I would allow the tray to be even larger, but the object that we are going to bring into the house must fit on the tray. And sometimes I might have to say no due to safety's sake, say like for a bird's nest, and not allow that in. But for the most part, if it fits on the tray, it can come in for a little while. It's okay if leaves wrinkle up, that's fine. That's a whole new thing for the child to look at and observe. So your observation tray is appropriate from toddler on up through even adolescence. The creativity extensions are what are going to drive the older child and finding creative outlets for the nature patterns are something to really emphasize with that age group. But I hope today that you have learned about the Montessori observing tray and that you recognize the need for the child to collect and curate what they have found in the world around them. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, come up with new lists of things that we should put on our observing tray at our house and let us know how it goes for you. Thank you so much for watching today and bye-bye.